sitting up there won't know why we're not doing before and against. And that's the only thing. And for me, it will be recorded how we voted, but sometimes those in the audience, I, I feel it might actually work the other way where they'll get confused if they only see opposed. I could be totally wrong in that, but that's just just a thought. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Morrison. I, I really don't see the complexity here. I think it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, we're not a large voting uh, group. Um, it doesn't take a lot of additional time to allow people to vote in opposition officially. Uh, I do see in the report that there's going to be a requirement of tax dollars to pay for advertising to inform the community about this and staff time to prepare this information for the community. And I really, what's the value? Well, what's the point? I mean, so we can shave off five minutes from our overall... Councillor, uh, I'm just going to ask you, you're speaking... Sorry, to through the council. chair, yeah. Uh, to your council. Yeah, it's a rhetorical question Thanks. Uh, through, the, through the chair. So, uh, and yeah, question to the council. So what is the point? I, 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 I mean, I, I, we had a, a member from the community come and speak to us in the earlier part of this meeting and spoke very admirably about it, but I still don't get the point. <laughs> I just I figure this is not a good use of tax dollars. It's not a good use of our staff's precious time. And I think the system works perfectly well. In fact, I think it's preferable as for why uh, uh, Councillor Brake was mentioning. People get to see how their council voted officially, either for or against. Not a big deal. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Shinhai. Uh, your Worship, I was entertaining the, the idea of passing a, a motion that this report be tabled. Uh, is there a seconder to the motion? I don't see a seconder. Thank you. Uh, Councillor McCon. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I'm also in agreement with Councillor Brand that uh, I think people want to see how you're going to vote and I don't think I need to walk down the street three days later and say, hey, I was at a council meeting and you sat there and you didn't do nothing. Well, I did, but this is the way we're done now. So then you have to spend the time explaining it. And as Councillor Morrison said, it's a cost to our staff because they're going to have to write it up. And I don't think we need that. Councillor Hunter, did you have your hand? I did. Um, thank you. So I, I see the benefits of uh, having a change, but I also see the negatives as well. I'm happy with the status quo. So I would be willing to um, move that council continue to vote on motions in the matter set on the council procedure bylaw 2715, 2009. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion? I certainly don't want to waste any more time on this, so I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Those opposed? Motion is carried. Thank you. We now move on to the report on development permits issued by the director. Thank you, Your Worship. I have nothing to add to the staff report. Thanks very much. Council, questions for the staff? Um, I will ask a, a question to break the ice. Um, I, I'm wondering, uh, in terms of the workload for the director, how whether that has created a significant change. Uh, no, Your Worship, it hasn't. Um, these are relatively straightforward development permits, so the amount of work involved is, is relatively minor, and it's certainly a lot less than preparing a report and bringing it to council for each one of these. Great, thanks. And I see that um, uh, there is a anecdotally that we're hearing that people are much happier with the length of time of the process so that, that's good uh, that's that was the reason to bring it back to get that sense councillor Huntley thank you I was going to move the recommendation uh, that the director of development services continue to review and issue development permits thank for you. projects that fall within the scope of the work uh, one thing I I hadn't really sort of given more thought to is should it come back for review or are we just satisfied with having it go? And frankly, I'm just satisfied with having it go forward. Unless there is a problem, I would think we should just continue on. Thank you. Is there a second or two? I'll motion? second that. Thank you. Further discussion? Seeing that, I'll call the question. All those in favor? 
Those opposed, none. Motion is carried unanimously. <coughs> we have the report on limiting certain types of commercial businesses. Ms. Snyder. Thank you, Worship. Uh, this report came about as a request of the uh, request of previous council to look at the idea of limiting certain types of businesses. Um, and in particular, it was in regard to um, check cashing and loan to pay type businesses, um, which we have several of in this final. Um, so we staff looked at several different other municipalities, and in association with this was the notion of creating more diversity in our commercial core as well as limiting certain types of businesses. And we found that quite a few businesses in BC, quite a few smaller communities, have taken measures to limit check cashing facilities for a variety of reasons. Um, and they've taken different approaches. Some of them have amended their definition of a financial institution so that check cashing facilities don't qualify. Others have said you can have a check cashing facility, but it has to be in a particular zone, or it has to be in a location where it doesn't have a frontage on your, on your major commercial street. And uh, uh, so I've included these in the staff report from the various communities in uh, Langley, Abbott Street, and uh, a couple of others. And in addition, uh, I also pointed out that uh, Sydney had tried to encourage diversity in their commercial sector by insisting that um, on their main drag, on the main street, uh, we can have you, that all of the businesses um, be in retail or some sort of retail service establishment, and they prohibit offices with the exception of real estate offices. And the purpose behind that is so that you have an active streetscape that's full of, of active uh, shop fronts, the things that people can walk by, they either stop into the shops or they go through the windows. So it creates that kind of old-fashioned um, shopping environment as opposed to going past uh, light walls that are often created when we have offices on the front street. Thank you. Council, before I open it up for discussion, I do want to let you know that it is my understanding that our Chamber of Commerce uh, will be meeting tomorrow night and having a discussion on this. And uh, so it might be valuable in view of that meeting to uh, uh, delay um, making a decision on this tonight. As well, I received a phone call from the president of the, um, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot my little piece of paper, but basically he's in charge of Canadian Payday Loan uh, um, Association. And they would like to come, at, at, and, and cash stores are included in that, and they would like to come to council and give a presentation so that we have some understanding of their business as well prior to making some decisions on this. So there are a couple of groups out there that would be interested in providing us with more information so that we can make this uh, decision with uh, all, uh, all bits of information. So I'm gonna open it up uh, for questions and discussion. Councilor Morrison. I'll move just to kick things off. I'll, I'll move the recommendation. Um, I also have a second motion that I would like to have separate from that. I don't know exactly the process, whether I should raise both motions. At this time, you move the, the recommendation, uh, and are you, is, would you want to include it with your recommendation, or it can be a separate ma uh, motion? I'd like it as a separate motion. Okay. I'll Thank second you. the. Thank you. Motion. Okay. Discussion, would you like to address your motion? Sure, um, I want to start off by saying, and I, and I understand the need or the desire by the Esquimalt Chamber of Commerce to also have an opportunity to, to have some input on this, in that this is a, 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 an issue of our relationship with the business community. Um, I, the second part, and I understand the mayor's just uh, relaying a message from, I forget the name of the group, a -A Loan or something, uh, to help us better understand what it is they do. Well, I think we already have a pretty good understanding of what they do and what they've done to our community. And in my mind, in the mind of many people in this community, it's a very negative uh, um, contribution to our community. Um, I just won't want to, I don't think that having a, a salesperson or a, a public relations person coming from that organization to tell us all the wonderful things that they're doing, I think is, a, is doing disservice to this community who does know the actual effect, the impact that such the types of businesses have on our community. Um, but to get back to my bigger point, 
I want to be very clear that this is not anti-business. Uh, I consider myself to be a very pro-business council member, as do I'm sure all of my colleagues on council. That's actually why we're here. The whole point of what we wanted to achieve this term was to open up Esquimalt to better quality businesses, to make Esquimalt a better place, a more desirable place to do business, to support our tax base, um, and to make it a better community for residents to enjoy and to want to live here as well. I, I, again, not mincing words, I talk to people all the time. I, I, I consider myself to be a pretty uh, aggressive ambassador as to all the benefits of living in Squamla and constantly trying to get people to consider moving here and raising their families here because as you all know in the audience and, and everyone in this community, we do have a wonderful community. But for the people outside our community, what they see is what they see on, when they drive into the community, which is our main street, which is the Squamla Road, which is littered with these types of businesses. These types of businesses do not add value to our community. They devalue our community. And they also, they also act as, as an anti-incentive for other businesses, better quality businesses, the businesses that we're striving so hard to attract into our community. They give them the incentive to stay out of our community. Councillor, I would like you to through the, through the, chair. the okay. report and your recommendation. And it, I'm, I'm not, it's not necessarily through the chair. Sure. It's the uh, committee of the whole, and I, I'll say this to please all, all the council, sure. because maybe I didn't give this direction early. When at committee of the whole, we are discussing amongst ourselves. So when you're addressing, will you please address your, your fellow council? Sure, so, so to the council, and, and I also want to express this to the concern from the Swell Chamber of Commerce wanting us to, well, the, it's not exactly clear, but there was a request that we delay this issue until after they've had an opportunity to have some input. If we truly want success, if we truly want to have, the, the mayor spoke of her uh, initiative for this council being Swimal Shines. And as I said earlier, it's a big part of, a big part of, component of that is to bring new businesses into our community, to make our community more economically successful and an overall more desirable place to live and raise a family. The way that the Squamal Chamber of Commerce and all businesses uh, in this community are going to better, best succeed if we provide an environment that makes it more desirable for that to happen. Uh, currently, we are, what I'm hearing anecdotally from other businesses is they don't want to locate on Squamal Road, they don't want to locate in Squamal because they don't want to be associated with payday loans, stores, cash checking stores, businesses that not only cheapen our community, but cheapen any business that locates alongside them or adjacent to them, right? We've had a lot of discussion just coming through this last election uh, cycle about what the future of a sky malt can be. And we all agree with the centennial being 2012, that this is the time for us to get serious about reinventing ourselves, rebranding ourselves, not not dismissing all the wonderful things that we have, because we already know all those things that exist that are so wonderful about Esquimalt. But the problem is, people don't see past Esquimalt Road. They don't. They don't see our parks and our recreation and all the wonderful people who live in this community and do great <coughs> things to make this place a wonderful place to live. What they see is Esquimalt Road. When they see Esquimalt Road, they see these types of businesses and the type of clientele that tend to hang around and are gravitating towards these businesses. And that's not a positive future for a squad mall. Thank you, um, So the second, do I have a second motion? Can I? And not at this time, okay. because we're discussing your first motion. Councilor Gray. Um, so I would like to touch on a few points that I've heard. I've, I've actually been quite neutral on, on this in, in a lot of aspects, because um, I've heard about the, the persona that it could uh, show. And then I've also, as a business owner and, and, and talking to other businesses, um, it has been known that if we limit and we push the, the check cashes downtown, because they will go downtown, um, is that people will then go downtown and they will spend their money downtown. They will not spend it locally at our businesses. That tends to what happens. They'll, they'll cash it, they'll go to the grocery store, they'll go to the, they'll go to the local liquor store, they'll go buy some tickets at Parks and Rec and, and go use the rec facilities. Um, I have some concern with the the type of people that use check cashing. I actually know quite a few students who use them. I know quite a few young families that 
are struggling between the paychecks because you know God love the banks they put a hold on, on your paycheck if you put it in the machine but your rent is due on Saturday and if you put your check in on Friday you don't actually get it into your account until Monday so they're you know so they, they do have their place and I if you drive by some of the people that you see in that store are, are quite average jokes um, young military young families so we have to be careful that we don't paint people that use that in a derogatory manner because many of them are not. Many of them are our residents right here in Esquimalt. Um, my one, uh, there's my, another point is um, competition is not necessarily a bad thing. There are great, well, there are good check cashing companies that are very reputable and try to be as fair as they can be, and then there are some that might not be so. So the weak will die off, the strong will survive. If the company is, is, is you know, valuable to our community, it will survive. If it's not, it will not survive. It's as simple as that. Um, I'd rather see a nice, tidy check cashing place than some of the derelict closed buildings that are, you know, they try to tag and graffiti and they sit empty and dirty inside and that's what you walk by. Um, those, so those are just other things to, to keep in mind. Um, yes, I don't know a lot about the companies. I don't use them. I do know they charge high interest rates, but have you used your visa lately? That's some of the other choices that you're giving these people. If they can't cash their check, they're going to max out their visa at 19%. God love them. Visa is just about as, as inhumane as some of the interest rates charged at the check cashing places and get people into just as much trouble. So I think we need to learn more about it. I think we need to, for the rapport that we have been trying to build with our Esquimalt Chamber of Commerce to ignore their ask for letting them to discuss it and take what they have in mind being the business community and ignoring them and going through with this proposal right now and voting on it without their input, I do not think votes well for our relationship with the Chamber of Commerce. So I think they need to be listened to and for due diligence, listening to the check cashing company think is really important. So for that reason, I will not be voting in favor of the motion that's on the floor. Thank you. Councilman Tana. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, as a long-standing resident of Squamo, if you stop and look, okay, we have four money marks laid out on the Squamo Road. Three of those stores have been here for years. The businesses around them have not gone, oh, sorry, here a cash grab or whatever and I'm out of here. That's not the way it's been. Uh, I'm not totally in favor of money marts or cash stores or whatever you want to call them, but they're a business. They're a business that will bring some revenue into this municipality. And I think if we put a, a bylaw in place saying, sorry, we can only have this many stores in a square mile, what happens to McDonald's? What happens if McDonald's wants to put another one up on the crate car? We're going to say, sorry, we've got a bylaw now that says we can only have one in a square mile? Or are we going to start passing bylaws to say that we can only have so many shoe stores in a square mile, or we can only have so many banks? I think we're opening a whole can of worms up. Uh, if the store is going to make it, it's going to make it on its own uh, criteria. So I don't think we as counselors need to be the ones to say whether that store is going to make it or not. So I will be voting against the Bible. Councillor Hundley. Thank you, Chair. Um, I understand the comments, uh, most of the comments made by uh, uh, Councillor Morrison. And I do have reservations myself about having more check cashing facilities in our municipality. However, I've heard a direct request for an opportunity to comment from the Chamber of Commerce and I, like Councillor Brain, feel that they need an opportunity to be heard. We've been asking for people to comment and, and encourage consultation and, and now we have an opportunity and to deny that just doesn't seem right. So I don't think there's a problem with um, a, a short delay in uh, addressing this and I don't feel that we need to rush through it. Short delay shouldn't be a problem, so I will vote against. Thank you. Councillor Hodgson. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. We were elected to uh, make decisions 
on behalf of those who we represent and uh, make decisions with respect to what's in the best interest of Esquimalt and the people of Esquimalt or in short, medium and long term. And uh, some of these decisions are gonna be tough decisions and uh, I for one uh, understand the need for collaboration and uh, reach out to the community to get good information. But in this particular circumstance, I believe we have that information. Uh, I was out campaigning and talked to a lot of people and this was one of the issues that was discussed at considerable length. And people want to see a different future with respect to some of the businesses. We have five already here and uh, therefore, in I will vote in support of this motion because I believe it is in the best interest of Esquimalt and the people of Esquimalt long term. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Shinbeck. Oh, thank you, Your Worship, and to you, the Council. Uh, I won't be supporting this motion. I do firmly believe that the market uh, uh, ec market economics will, will dictate whether that new business will stay in business or not. If it becomes number six and it puts somebody else out, we're back down to five again, so that win, that loss. However, what I did uh, earlier too was I uh, actually visited one of the, the uh, money marts and I spoke to the people that were using it. And I have to say that's where my, uh, what really changed my opinion on it. The people that were there needed to use that service, plain and simple. For whatever reasons in their economic life, they needed to use that service. And I don't feel comfortable at all uh, passing any bylaw or recommendation that would disenfranchise any members of our community. And I have a, a strong feeling that that's just not the right thing to do. Uh, whether it's some people think that it cheapens the look of the street, well, they don't look too bad to me. So, and I happen to live on a scramble road. And anyway, so that, that's it, Your Worship, and I'm Council. I won't support the, the motion. I believe that we should let the market deal with it, and we should also give consideration to the people that do use that service. Thank, Thank you. you. Council Morrison. Just in response to some of the concerns expressed. Uh, so first of all, we're not banning this type of business. I think that's a misrepresentation of this uh, recommendation, this motion. What this motion says is that we currently have five already in existence, and certainly for a community of 17,000 people, five of the same type of business um, is five enough. Um, so let's be clear as to what we're voting on. We're not disenfranchising any uh, user groups, uh, clientele that need to use these services. They'll have five to continue uh, um, using. The, the issue is that we thought we had four, and we thought well, four was enough, Certainly four would be enough. And suddenly now there's a fifth. <laughs> so what's to prevent a sixth? I don't even know how many different comp competitors there are in this type of industry. Um, but we can talk about a little bit, and I apologize if I made disrespectful remarks about clientele, and I, that certainly wasn't my intention. Actually, my intention was more in defense of the clientele and the way that they get abused by this sort of business model. Um, you know, you could talk, you could hear, and listen to, uh, read, our most respected uh, consumer advocates um, in this country, but probably more notable is, is, uh, is Ralph Nader. And Ralph Nader points out very clearly, from the American uh, very well-known uh, advocate of consumer rights, that this business model actually uh, exploits those people that this council has expressed that need this service. Actually, it, it has those people, it's part of their business model to ensure that those people aren't able to pay back their loan on time because they don't make a lot of money that way. Yes, the interest is high, but it's on an original small amount of money, so therefore the revenue into the business or these types of businesses is not where they make their money. And they certainly don't make their money from cash and checks. That's the draw to bring people in. But the business model is actually very specific. They go into areas where they know that there's a certain low income uh, uh, residency element and they also specifically look for um, highly populated military bases. Well, guess what? That's, what's, that's a swine mole. 
Squamal Road has a lot of lower income apartment buildings and it has a huge military base with a very young, young family and, and young recruit uh, population. That's their target. They draw them in from getting their, ca their, cash, uh, their checks cashed and then they sell them on, well, you know what, you got some money, but you can get a lot more money. It's not going to cost you very much. It's, this is all, you, this is no questions asked, sign here, it's yours. Next thing you know, that next paycheck, it's going right, right back to the money lending store. And guess what? They're, they're falling further and further behind on their loans, and their, their loans are defaulting. That's exactly what this business Sounds model calls for. Yes, yeah, sure. So, so, I mean, let's be clear. I, I, I certainly do not want to cause any disrespect to the clientele of this service. I want to really be clear that uh, we want to build a community where, where, where our citizens don't fall prey to these kind of businesses uh, on a frequent basis and on a very vulnerable basis. Uh, and that is our community. That, that's who their target market is, the people that live and work in this wine hall. Um, I'm going to actually, I mean, I'm not an idiot here. I can count votes. So I'm going to uh, vote to table my own motion. Um, I think that there is a possibility that with some more input, uh, I will be attending the Chamber of Commerce meeting tomorrow night. Um, I think with a little bit more research as to exactly what it is that this, these type, this, the business model is, and I'm willing to provide that research myself, uh, circulate that to, to the council. But I will move to table this motion until, uh, until our next meeting. Do you want to have a second? Second. Okay. I'll call the question. All those in favor? This is on table, right? It's on table. Yeah. Okay. None of both motion is good. <coughs> Now move on to Swanwell Village Plan. Ms. Snyder. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, this report is just intended to provide a brief background on the history of the Swanwell Village Plan. I don't have any further comments yet, but I'll be happy to answer any questions. Great. Thanks very much. <laughs> Council. I'll open up. Um, I'm very pleased to see this come forward. These uh, recommendations to me are some of the things that are outstanding and, and also help us to outline the, the process as we go forward. Um, <coughs> I would be very interested to hear from council members uh, and uh, be able to uh, get along with this discussion. Council, if there is no discussion or, or uh, concerns, then you do have a recommendation before you. Councillor Gray. Um, so to go back to the recommendations of MA three review to staff, um, the public meeting that is listed in number three of the recommendations. So is that for discussion on sale or retention, or is it more on the project as a whole? I think it would be a bit of both actually, because um, there, there seemed to be some misinformation previously when, when people came to the public hearing, and um, and just in speaking to people um, since the public hearing. At different events, I've heard some uh, some facts that aren't quite correct. So I think it would be worthwhile to have a, another information meeting before the actual public hearing to clarify some of that information. And I think that one of the points that needs to be clarified is how council is going to dispose of this property if they are going to dispose of it, or whether they're going to work in partnership with them. Because I've heard from several people, <coughs> there seems to be the assumption that there already is a developer that's been chosen, and that's not correct. Um, so, yeah, so I'm glad to hear that we'll talk, you know, clear up some of the misunderstandings because, I mean, there have been, you know, considerable meetings, open public meetings, as well as open houses. So, I mean, the cost of having yet another public meeting is, you know, a bit frustrating, but if it will help clear up some of the misconceptions, then that's a good thing. Councillor Hunt. Thank you, Chair. I believe that it's a good thing that we have the discussions around the potential result of what happens with the land uh, before the uh, bylaws were actually um, discussed in a public hearing. So I'm in favor of that. I also had one question, and that's on page 16. And this was in relation to 
um, the loss of green space and loss of a playground. And um, so through the chair of staff, it wasn't clear for me that that, in fact, was the case. Could you please clarify that for me? Uh, well, the intention would be that the town square, which currently exists out behind the library here, would be moved up to a spinal road. Um, there wasn't um, plans actually to bring the playground up here as well, so, so I think that was a concern that some people have is that the playground would actually be lost. Um, and there's always the possibility of locating that playground equipment in another park, maybe even another park immediately across the street. But that children's playground wouldn't be relocated adjacent to a Squinal Road. That wasn't the intention of the, of the public space that was going to be created. Any further discussion? Councillor Hodgson. Uh, as uh, colleagues at the table, I'm uh, quite excited about opportunity for public to be uh, more engaged in this project going forward. And I'm very supportive of that. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Bray, I'll move the staff recommendation. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second that. Thank you. Further discussion? Councillor uh, Shelby. Thank you, Your Worship, through you. The, the recommendation that's being made or the ultimate motion that comes out of this, because that, that motion would include all four parts of the recommendation. Thank you. Anything further? Uh, I just want to say that uh, uh, I'm certainly excited to have this come back on the table, and I know that as time goes on, and this is certainly one that we in Esquimalt have um, spent a lot of time on, but a lot of time goes by, and so it is important to bring everybody back up uh, onto the same page again and have a, an understanding of where we left off. The, the discussion around the site being retained by the ca uh, township or sold or, or all of those, I think that that is going to require um, not only uh, partial discussion at one meeting, but may require more, and I think we as a council have to be aware of that. That, that is certainly uh, an area where in, in the past I've heard, uh, you know, when are you going to get to that discussion? That's, that's very important. We're supportive of the project. How does it go forward from there? And so uh, I, I think that um, if we see from the um, community that they, they want and need to have uh, discussion on that, that we make sure we provide that time. Anything further? Councillor Bray. Uh, just a quick question, and you may not be able to answer this through to staff. Kind of timelines that you're looking at if this motion goes forward? next committee of the whole to talk about the land and site issues, I think. Um, that, I think that's the first discussion that has to take place, and then from there, um, we can bring that information forward to the public meeting so that we can get some input on, on your discussions from now. So I think we start with the next committee of the whole. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Council, you have the recommendations one to four in front of you. I will call the question. All those in favor? Those opposed to none, motion is carried unanimously. We now move on to the item five development permit for 880 Espinal Road. And uh, Ms. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ms. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, this is a development permit. Right now. It's for forming character of a commercial establishment. Um, the premise has been there for a number of years, but there's a, a space that's unenclosed that could be better utilized if it were enclosed, and that's what the applicant is requesting. Um, the applicant is in the audience and has a prepared presentation for the committee. Uh, just before we go on to the applicant, do are there uh, questions of staff at this time? Seeing none, um, the applicant is in the room. Welcome. Thank you. Please come forward and uh, address council. Thank you.
evening, Net America Counselor. My name is Doug Simons with Rapid Design, and I'm here with uh, Mrs. Paulina Denux, the Vice President of Legere's Properties, the owners of um, Class Valentine at uh, Esquimalt and Ed Street. And we have uh, before you uh, <coughs> quite a modest little proposal to enclose 28 square meters of existing deck space on the upper level of building D property. And just to give you a bit of background, the property consists of four buildings. Building A and B are freestanding single story commercial buildings. Building C is two story commercial on the main floor, parking on the upper level. And building D is uh, commercial on the main floor access ramps to parking on C and 140 square meters of floor space. Our proposal is to enclose 28 square meters of that 140. That enclosure would take in three glazed walls. Trying to keep in character with the existing building as much as possible, the enclosure would be uh, matching glass and aluminum as much as possible to the existing building. We intend to uh, extend the roof in the same standing seam metal roofing color to match the details of the gutter uh, finishes all to extend what is existing, uh, carry the, the character through as much as possible. There's not as I say, not a lot to it, it's pretty modest. Um, there is a sign included in the development permit for the existing tenant, the Victoria Bridge Center. And the, the, the kind of mechanics of the thing, um, we're enclosing the space, extending into the existing, so existing washrooms are already in place, existing mechanical systems are already in place. Um, so we're not involved in very much of that. Um, so really, that's pretty much all I can explain to you about it. I'm happy to try and answer any questions. That Thank you have. very much, Mr. Sainz. And uh, I will open it up to Council to ask questions. Councilor Morrison. I'll simply move the recommendation for questions for me. Well, um, I'll just hold off. Thank you. We'll just get see if there are questions. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I know the, the building, okay? There's a number of businesses that are in that uh, facility there. Now, the upper has all been parking before. Is that parking staying, or is that parking being excluded to just strictly the bridge, or, no or is it going to be still open to everybody? Uh, it's open to everybody. There's no changes to the parking whatsoever. Okay. Um, there's an existing deck. Along yep. this part now, yep. that is completely underutilized. It has right. a couple of, of yep. tables out there, but that's yeah, it. It's not being used. So, okay. okay. Councillor Hundleby and then Councillor Hopkins. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you for coming and providing your plans to us. How long would it take for you to put this in place? So, suppose we approve this and it goes forward, how long does it actually take to? do the work and, and have it complete? Uh, I think that it would be complete once permits and the rest are in place in about three months, 12 weeks. And so does that then uh, affect any of the tenants then? No, no. The, the, the reason for the, the whole enclosure is uh, on behalf of the Victoria Bridge Club. That they have requested that the space be investigated and they, they would be more than happy to, to take it on. Thank you. Councillor Hodges. Well, I'd also like to thank you for your presentation and uh, I really appreciate the design. I think it enhances the area and also increases floor space so that we have more opportunity for people to uh, be involved and perhaps pay taxes. So, kudos. Thank you. Uh, Yes, uh, uh, I think this is a wonderful addition. It uh, provides 
for a larger space. So should the bridge club not, um, you know, want to stay there forever? Um, I am constantly being asked for a slightly larger space than we have available in our community. And in fact, I'm sure that this would add that amount of space that I've been asked for several times in the past. So uh, it, it, it's a wonderful spot. The view is incredible. Uh, you know, so the bridge club, I don't know how they're going to play bridge. <laughs> uh, but but I'm, I'm pleased to see that, that the space that hasn't been really utilized well, that deck space, is going to be put to better use. My only question is around uh, whether you're going to be doing things like recycling the windows for uh, the new uh, uh, section or yes, the the old windows that will be removed, um, that material will be recycled. Um, we can't um, reuse the existing window frames. Uh, we want to put in um, double glazing in the, in the new, um, and so the frames won't work. So we've got a little bit of an issue that uh, we're getting the new frames powder coated to match the uh, original, because there's a, an issue of finishes there. But, but. Okay. So it, I hear you say you're going to go to double glaze, so uh, currently they're single? Yeah. yeah. Thank you, because that was really the root of my question uh, no. in terms of improving the efficiency. So really appreciate that, and I'm uh, fully supportive. So. Um, Unless there are other questions, I will entertain your motion now, um, sure. Councilor Morris. As so moved as second. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? Thank, Thank you. You passed phase one. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you. Now we move on to the section of the meeting. Public question and comment period. And, uh, are there any members of the public that wish to speak? When you come forward, would you please give us your name and address? And uh, as courtesy, you are given two minutes, but I'm usually uh, generous on it unless I see a very long lineup. Tonight we have lots of uh, opportunity. Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is John Birdbush, and I live at 1230 Old Esquimalt Road. Um, I'm a little confused by your uh, process here because I notice on your council meeting agenda it says public input excluding items which or have been the subject of public hearing. And I see on your okay, the whole agenda excluding items which are or have been the subject of a public hearing. And you passed a motion tonight that in fact in point three says you're going to have a public meeting, but you've also included in Part D, a public hearing. Now, my comments would have been on one of the, the development of the town center, but I'm not sure that I can speak on it, given your motion, nor do I'm sure that you can have a public meeting since you've already proposed a public hearing. I also understand this recommendation to council. So my question is, can I, what can I talk about in terms of this tonight, given the motion you passed and given how your procedure by all works. Thank you. Uh, we, uh, through earlier portion of this year, went through a process where we uh, had to ask all those same questions. And uh, in order to allow open and further discussion on village projects, uh, the process is that we must set another um, uh, public hearing. So with that setting of public hearing, which we did earlier in the summer, set it to come forward again in February of this year, we, are, we were then allowed to open up the dialogue again. So, so you may speak about the issue of the village project. Yes. Ah, so Pauline, you can okay. talk to us. Uh, first, I'm just going to make one quick question or comment then, and that is, um, What's a village? And I looked up the definition in uh, the, the uh, local, or in our local, in our dictionary at home, one of our dictionaries at home, and it says that a village is somewhat larger than a hamlet and smaller than a town. 
And I thought to myself, how many hamlets have I seen, or slightly bigger than a hamlet, that has a 12 or 8 story high rise in it? So I think, first of all, you need to kind of rethink your title for your project. It's not a Squimalt village. It might be a Squimalt downtown. Um, but the, the semantics of the word using every village is quite misleading. Um, second day, I can tell you right now that you'll be hearing from us because we are unalterably opposed to anything over four stories. We think that four stories is compatible with what is in the area already and certainly compatible with the neighborhood, and certainly compatible with our front, um, with our front view. Um, some people say, NIMBY, not in my backyard. Um, our position is not in our front yard. Um, and there's a little bit of difference there. Um, so having said that, I'd also like to invite all of you, we'll be able to get in touch, to come to our house and see what the impact this proposal has on us very specifically. Uh, and not just us, but our neighbors, so that you can uh, understand very clearly why this project is not uh, favored by us. In fact, we'll work to oppose it. Thanks. Thank you. Are there other members of the public that wish to speak? Are there members of the public that wish to speak? Uriel Dunn, 1193 Old Squamalt Road, and of course I was here an hour ago, and I told you the police story, and Keith wasn't here, although I told everybody else what a great uh, occasion I had with dealing with the police, and I want to publicly now thank Keith uh, for the concern and the great care my mom got at 818 Wollaston Street. Thanks very much, and uh, I'm happy to have Keith here. Um, listening to the council meeting and listening to what was said about up and down the Squamal Road about the cash uh, uh, shops or whatever we're going to call them, um, I'm very disappointed that uh, it would not be unanimous to think that five is enough. Five is enough. We have banks, we have five cash machines, uh, we have on the base and I was at the public meeting where a gentleman came here discussing the latest one and when it was asked why he came uh, to Esquimalt, he said it was because of uh, the military base. Um, having belonged to the military since 1953, that just makes me boil right over. And um, I would like a really close consideration in thinking it's not that we're stopping businesses, um, I agree with Tim. Uh, we've got enough. Enough is enough. And uh, I think five's enough. So. And the third thing is, didn't know a thing about the bird bushes coming. I uh, had no idea that John was going to talk about that. But nothing to do with a view or anything else. But my idea of a village is the same as their idea as a village. It has nothing to do with who owns the view or what I can see or can't see. I just think that. Uh, abominable that we would think that a 12-story and an 8-story building is a uh, village. And when I'm listening to coming up about the next Committee of the Whole and we're going to be discussing the land, uh, I would like everybody to think very carefully about letting a Squimalt land go to anybody except a Squimalt. Once that land's gone, the McDonald's is the, the greatest uh, show of how we let our land go. We sold that piece <coughs> of that land to McDonald's. Never should have. We do not want to sell any more Esquimalt land. Thanks very much. Thank you. Any further uh, members of the public that wish to speak? Hi, Corey Payne, 853 Rock Heights. I didn't come here planning to speak, but a lot of the my friends and people in the community are in favor of this plan, want this plan to go ahead. We are tired of the look of a Squamalt Road, and we want development. Development's what it's going to get us going forward. We're tired of being stagnated by rundown buildings and the clientele that run and operate a lot of want a lot of these businesses. Sorry, I'm nervous. All right, so not everybody is against these buildings. A lot of us want them to go ahead. Developers do not build four-story four buildings. There's no money in four-story buildings. They want to go eight or 12. 
Six is a bit of a push, right? It's even hard to do six now, right? We need development. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other members of the public that wish to speak? Are there members of the public that wish to speak? Any other members of the public that wish to speak? Seeing none, I need a motion for adjourn. Well, Madam Mayor, can I just make that comment before we adjourn? In terms of, I want to pass on kudos to staff. Uh, I've heard today from uh, residents on the Craig Flower how pleased they are with the bus shelter that's being put in by Garthland. And I'm aware that there have been several other modern bus shelters put in along that area. And uh, it's very positive. And I'm also, also aware that uh, Squimalt has been very fortunate in that we were able to negotiate with Transit for additional bus shelters at no cost. And uh, this is a positive thing. So. Uh, through the CAO to uh, engineering and other staff, uh, thank you for the extra effort in getting us the shelters and having the shelters installed in a timely way. Thank you. Uh, uh, do I have the motion now? So no. Move. Thank you and a second. Okay. All those in favor. Motion is carried. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs>